Simply Scuba presents the Deco Stop Podcast. Hi guys, welcome to Deco Stop. So this is the podcast from Simply Scuba. Uh, I'm Mark. And I'm Craig. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Timing. Saw his cue there. It's all about timing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this is a podcast where we talk about all things scuba diving and just anything that happens really under the water. Um, today's episode is sponsored by Scuba Diver Magazine. Um, very good magazine, but we'll talk more about them later. Um, but actually, as a little um, kind of hint, because we're based in uh, in Faversham, if you are in the, uh, the the Kent area and you do fancy visiting us, um, Scuba Diver Magazine just sends us loads of magazines uh, mm. that you can pick up for free. Um, so if you want something free just to uh, sort of peruse at your leisure, uh, then yeah, head over to the shop and uh, and yeah, just sort of ask for a free copy. Uh, we, we've got plenty. Um, the podcast, as you know, is uh, available all over the place because you're obviously listening to this, uh, but mainly it's available on Radio Public. Public, uh, so don't forget to download the app onto your phone, um, and then you can start listening on the go. So sort of whilst you're walking the dogs, whilst you're doing your like daily commute to and from work in the car, you can just sort of listen to uh, to uh, Greg and myself chatting about scuba diving. Hmm. Uh, okay, today's episode we're going to be talking about dive computers in our uh, sort of topic, and then afterwards we're going to be going through your questions, comments, and queries. But first up, here's the news. So we've got the uh, first off it's a bit sad. We've got the death of a rebreather driver uh, diver yes. uh, it was a cracked screen yeah, yeah. so um, so the inquest heard from um, from what I understand from the information that we have they were going to uh, to dive off I believe it was the uh, the south coast out of Plymouth and uh, they were going to dive a sort of 60 70 meter shipwreck mm. um, it was like an old World War one shipwreck and um, <clears throat> going down the line one of the other divers actually got um, sort of caught up in some ghost gear um, but this diver, the diver who passed away, uh, actually helped him out. Um, he was very cool and calm, just kind of sorted him out, continued down to the uh, to the wreck. But once they got down to the depth, he noticed there was something wrong with his computer. Again, very calm and collected, sort of signaled, oh, there's something wrong with my computer. I'm going to go back up. Mm. He went up with another buddy pair. and um, But then after the rest kind of surface they noticed he still was in the water they saw his smb so kind of assumed everything was fine he was just doing some i don't know unusually long deco stop um but then eventually he just never surfaced so um so yeah, yeah so they, they called emergency services and they recovered the body and um yeah they realized that a, a cracked screen in his uh, dive computer mm. was most likely the cause and it basically they believe it malfunctioned his uh, his rebreather yeah. so it stopped uh, regulating his sort of ppo2 and uh, yeah, he, he most likely died of hypoxia. Um, so terrible story, but Very sad. Um, but again, <clears throat> it just really kind of drills into you. Just make sure that you double double check all of your dive equipment for any kind of imperfection, and um, yeah, don't don't sort of run the risk if yeah. you if you see something, um, do something about it. Don't go scuba diving with it, but get it checked out yeah so we've got uh so look at this one this is a bit nicer uh, how scuba diving is helping disabled veterans and mm. it's on the abc <clears throat> news really nice story yeah so this is this is sort of going on more and more uh i myself i did it um sort of once years and years ago um with a uh, i think it was from the the paras the parachute regiment mm. and um he lost basically both of his legs and uh, one of his hands was um was damaged in an explosion um but yeah we sort of got him in the swimming pool he, he was a great laugh because we, yeah. we were trying to be all like pc about okay so so how do they yeah. like wheeled him into the pool room and it's like oh, okay so so how are we going to get you into the water and he's like oh just running start and then just tip me at the end and i'll just go in <laughs> they like, have a dark humor yeah that we just got ready for. It. I <laughs> know like, what you mean. I've, yeah, yeah. You're gonna do well. Okay. Yeah. And um, and yeah, we um, we gave him like a DPV and all mm -hmm. this kind of stuff. He loved it. Yeah. But yeah, more and more veterans and um, scuba diving is just sort of helping everyone, both mentally and physically, because it's that kind of freeing uh, experience. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, yeah it, it gets them sort of doing mm -hmm. something um, enjoyable, and yeah, it, it definitely is working as therapy. Yeah, I've taken a fun diver um, who only had one leg just off at the knee, yeah. um, and he had a, um, a fake leg put in, which okay. was uh, neutrally buoyant. It, amazing, this thing. It had all these loads of stickers over it. <laughs> yeah. it was really cool. Yeah. But um, yeah, 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 it was brilliant. Yeah. Absolutely brilliant, yeah. yeah. It can be done. Yep. Definitely, uh, definitely. Right, Co. Pulmonary barotrauma at Bonaire. <clears throat> um, yeah, this is another one. But... Yeah. I read the story and um, 
it's a matter of the guy kind of sounded fine. It was just at the end of the dive, his um, his kind of neck was quite swollen, right. and under the skin um, kind of felt quite crackly, which is subcutaneous emphysema. Mm-hmm. Um, but then when the doctors like uh, CT scanned his chest and all this, they found like mediastinal um, sort of air pockets in his chest and all this kind of stuff. And um, they didn't mention whether he'd like skip safety stops or anything. It sounded fairly like a standard dive, yeah. but yeah, this this guy sort of really suffered. <clears throat> it, it had happened previously before on a different dive, right. but um, he just um, sort of wrote it off as oh, I don't know, I don't know, had like a bad pizza or something, got mm-hmm. some Benadryl, mm-hmm. and yeah. um, just said, oh, everything will be fine. But um, but yeah, it's dangerous. It is. So yeah, yeah, if if you ever do feel anything weird, any like I don't know indigestion or yeah crackling under the skin, that's mm, definitely a don't risk sign it. of a bend. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. No, unfortunately, no. maybe scuba diving's not for you. No, <coughs> no. Right, something a bit nicer then. So let's yeah. have a look. Uh, three U.S. planes found in the Pacific Lagoon. Yes, although Sean's written plans. <laughs> <laughs> you, you type too fast, Sean. <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> Three plans. <Yeah. laughs> oh, he's crying now. <laughs> sorry, um, Sean. Sorry, Sean. Um, yeah, yeah, they found some planes. Uh, to be brutally honest, I didn't read into this uh, news story. No, I, I saw me the head- neither. <laughs> I, saw, uh, I saw the news news headline. And I was like, oh, Greg will read that. Yeah, but um, I, I Greg didn't. clearly didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but no worries. We're, no we're, worries. We're good at research. Yeah, yeah, we're, yeah. yeah. We, we, we're good at equipment and F- procedures. Football's on last night. I'm really sorry. <laughs> right, so uh, last bit of news. Uh, Navy sonar linked to whale stranding on Guam. Yeah, so there's there's long been kind yes. of this believed mm-hmm. link uh, between sort of Navy sonar and um, sort of whales having issues. Yep. Um, but now they're sort of finding strong links <clears throat> between, yeah, like Navy, uh, naval whatever yeah. um, navy in the area and um, yeah sort of all sorts of pinnipeds and whales and cetaceans yeah. and whatnot just kind of going just don't a like wall this. of noise and yeah. they just don't know what to do and yeah. they end up beaching themselves mm. so um, so yeah maybe this study will sort of eventually um, mm. sort of make them go oh you know what stop using this yeah. in certain yeah. areas yes um, yeah yeah a bit sad isn't it granted you need to know where you're going but come on stop yeah, but- it's not the Cold War. No. <laughs> right, so uh, this last one I found the other day. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's access to World War II ships off of Greece now. You can apply for a license to dive off them. Okay, that's yeah. cool. Yeah, but I'd imagine the <coughs> license is quite stringent. But um... Yeah, it's, it's one of those catch-22s. You want to kind of open it up to mm-hmm. um, to tourism, but if you just give it a, a free-for-all, then, yep. yeah, the wrecks can get damaged. Yeah, um, yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's good that they're um, sort of letting some people in. It's yeah. a bit like the um, the licenses to go up um, Mount Everest. Mm. Um, that's gone a little bit sublime to the extreme, and now it's just getting ruins. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, no, as long as they uh, sort of regulate it properly, yeah, have we've got, got some more. Have they got a Costa at Stage 2 now? <laughs> it wouldn't surprise it's me. It's getting like that, isn't it? It would not surprise me. I think there's an option where you can just be carried by a Sherpa. And they yeah. literally carry you, like yeah. Romeo and Juliet, all the way up to the top yeah. of the mountain and back again. I was, uh, I was listening to a... Um, uh, an audio book by Ant Middleton when he went up uh, Everest and he mm. said yeah there was this one guy he shouldn't have been on the mountain <laughs> and he was uh, he was holding everyone back at this like ice wall mm. and the Sherpas were just kind of like oh, and they just lifted him up they just pulled him up like <laughs> a sack um, it's just no that's dangerous yes. <laughs> I'm winning <laughs> yeah. yeah I paid for this <laughs> oh, oh. it's terrible selfie stick yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so now on to uh, some news in stores. Um, so at the moment, um, there's not a great deal. February is that kind of quiet month. But what we do have, we do have uh, a load of new Cressy equipment that arrived uh, sort of yesterday for us. But this is um, sort of like a few days ago for you guys. Um, and um, yeah, we, we basically looked at the, uh, the the Cressy 2020 range. And we're just like, oh, yeah, we like that. We like this. Um, so we've got a whole bunch of that in. Um other than that, it's kind of quiet. Yeah. Uh, everything exciting has kind of already arrived. Um, anything on the horizon is still on the horizon. It's it's not sort of 
any closer. But um, but yeah, that's kind of it. As soon as we get anything new and exciting, of course, we will tell you guys. Um, if there is anything that you guys want us to stock, obviously let us know in the comments below. Uh, we're looking at sort of certain brands and like working out deals. Uh, it's not just a matter of like calling them up and saying, oh, can you sell us stuff? It's, um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a little bit more complicated than that. But um, but yeah, we, we've got a few brands uh, sort of on the, on the back boiler mm. that are um, sort of coming up. Uh, I'm not going to mention any names because I don't like over-promising things. But um, but yeah, if there are any brands, any uh, sort of specific piece of equipment that you want us to stock and that we can, because that's another thing. So many people see the, um, they go to the, I don't know, Scuba Pro website and they're like, oh, I've seen this on the website. And it's like, yeah, that's great, but we can't actually get it here in the UK. Um, <laughs> not yet available Not yet. Humans. Yeah, they're, they're being tested in America. <clears throat> so... Um, but yeah, if there's anything that you want us, uh, just let us know and, uh, and we'll tell you whether we can or can't. Because if we don't know that you want it, we don't yeah. know whether we want to get it in or not. <laughs> That's it. <clears throat> should we go on to the topic? Okay. Go on then. <laughs> right. So this week's topic is why you should buy a dive computer. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll have a look at the different styles of computer. What kind of computers did you start with and why? Mm -hmm. uh, what works for new divers? Um, should you buy the most teched out dive computer straight away? Of course you should. Yeah. Um, strongest brands of, of computers. Computers and what makes dive computers different from each other? Okay. So let's start at the top then. Um, so why why should you buy a dive computer? In my opinion, hmm. yeah. Um, a dive computer is there for safety. Um, its sole job is to get you back to the surface safely. Um, and it takes away all of the complicated maths and <coughs> tables and all that kind of stuff. So all you have to do as l is look at the screen on your wrist and just go, oh, okay, well, I can stay here for 10 more minutes. And yeah, if, if you ascend, it's like, oh no, you need to stop here and do a safety stop. Oh, okay, I'll do a stop here. And it counts you down. So it's all about safety and, um, and it, it just, yeah, it makes your dive easier mm. you don't have to worry too much about like planning your entire dive out like stroke for stroke it's just you can literally just jump in the water yeah. swim down and then your computer kind of works it all out for you yeah as nice as it is playing with the tables and and i re I, I genuinely really enjoyed playing with the tables because i don't Nerd. get maths i do not get maths and for yep. me to get that was like, <gasps> it was like a, a new world i just walked through so um, yeah that was really cool but yeah that once you've got a dive computer it's so much easier you can yeah. you dive to your computer don't you yeah yeah all right so different styles of dive computers mm, well we have the brick yeah, the, the, yeah. <laughs> the, the, the watch style computer. So I, I yeah, I split them into uh, like four categories. So you either get puck sized dive computer, the size of a hockey puck, mm. um, which are wrist mounted dive computers. So they're large screen uh, wrist mounted. You then get the kind of smaller wrist watch sized dive computer. You can then get air integrated computers that are fitted to your um, your gauges, and then you can get some uh, sort of HUD heads up display yeah. dive computers that are, like fit to your mask. Mm, mm. Um, they all have their pros and cons. Yeah. Um, I mean, what do you prefer? I like the watch one, um, mm. and we're going to get onto it in a minute. But everybody has their own brand that they really like. Yeah, I, I know, I know you like Shearwater. <laughs> <laughs> Here I am, um, waving my little Shearwater yeah, flag. Love it. <laughs> um, yeah, no, no, I, I really like Sunto, but I, I, yeah, I different. Well, what dive did you start with? I started with the Gecko. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was given a gecko. I think so many on, people started yeah, with a gecko. You're given a gecko on your advanced and off you go, yeah. uh, which, was, which was really cool. Um, but yeah, um, after that, you want to get your own one. And I, I, I ended up starting with the Sunto, uh, which I really, uh, the Stinger. Yeah. I uh, really, really like that one. Yeah, classic watch size. Yeah. I, yeah. You still see them, even yeah. though they haven't made them. Mm. Ugh, I yeah. don't know how long, but no. yeah, they're yeah. tough. Yeah, I've still got the one with the titanium strap. Nice. Really cool. Yeah, very yeah. swish. Yes, yes. Um, I mean, my first ever. I mean, my dive computer history. My my personal ones. I've dived on so many dive computers now. This this is an amazing job for just like getting new dive computers and just like trying them out but um but personally so i started on a sunto d4 mm -hmm. um i don't think it was even a sunto d4i this was before air right. integration yeah uh and then i moved on to a d6 uh which is like the upgraded version of the uh the four mm. um and then i moved on to the helo 2 which is a sort of puck sized it's a bit more of a technical dive computer uh and then when that flooded 
um, because I changed the battery and didn't do it right, obviously. Oh. <laughs> um, I, I basically moved on to a, a Shearwater Perdix. Yeah. Um, and that's never leaving yeah. my wrist. <laughs> <laughs> Ever. He's got it on right now. Yeah. <laughs> No. Um, so yeah, sit and wearing every bath. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mm. max depth of 0. 0.2 meters. <laughs> yeah. Um, no. So so yeah. So puck sized with a large screen on your wrist. I quite like that because you have more square footage. Um, you can literally have much more information on your screen. Mm. Um, the downside is is that they're quite big and clunky, and it's quite weird to yeah wear them outside of the dive site. Mm. Um, that you then have your watch size dive computer, which you can wear all day. Yep. As a um, as like a professional diver, these are very very practical. Yep. When I was teaching, I was uh, I was on my D six, and um, and yeah, because you just you wear it day to day. It's your normal wristwatch, and then you don't even have to think about it because as soon yeah. as you jump in the water, it becomes your dive computer. So um, so yeah, they're very practical, but yeah. they have a limited face um, yes. square footage, so yeah. you can't get that much information on. Mm -hmm. So you do get a fair few TLAs or yeah. three-letter acronyms that you're like, uh, what's that trying <laughs> to say? Yeah. Um, so yeah, they're good for that. Air-integrated computers, they're much more popular in the States. We don't tend to see them here in um, in the United Kingdom. They, um, I don't know, they haven't really hit our market. Mm. I do see the benefit of them because, yeah, yeah you, you instead of a set of gauges, you've got a dive computer. Um, but I was reading one, uh, one review. I'm, I'm not going to say sort of where it was. It, it wasn't on our website. But someone was saying, oh, yeah. Why, why would you buy, like, an analog console and a dive computer mm. when you can just have your dive computer, but then instead of a console, get an air-integrated computer? Yeah, so then you've yeah. got two computers. Mm -hmm. I was thinking, well, yeah, that's great, but the battery can never run out on my analog yes, console. that's it. So that's why I still dive with analog gauges, mm. because they're my redundant backup. Yes. So yeah. I know that, yeah, if my dive computer does pack in as my... Um, uh, my Hilo 2 did on one dive, I've still got that back up, so I still know how much air I've got, mm. how deep I am, and I can like work out, because I've got a wristwatch as well, uh, I can work out my safety stops yeah, yeah, safely. Yeah, definitely. Um, right, so let's have a look. Um, so what works for new divers, <laughs> what do you reckon? Most end up with <clears throat> something like a Oceanic VO1, like yep. a large screen um, to the computer, the one thing that I'd recommend is go for one with the most buttons. Mm -hmm. I know it sounds silly, but a one-button user interface yes. is really complicated. Remembering to hold it down for five seconds You've got to hold you it get down. to the menu while you're on a dive. <laughs> yeah. yep. uh, and just trying to navigate because you kind of have to go all the way. You have to cycle through all yeah. of the menus if you skip over it or if you don't hold it long yeah. enough to go into that menu. By which time you're on another dive site. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, if you can, uh, look for the number of buttons uh, on a dive computer. Uh, and also look at the display. Um, you can get good dive computers or you can get a dive computer for very little money they're not ridiculously expensive mm. but when you look at the display it's that yeah. kind of 1980s segment display yeah and when it's trying to tell you something complicated it's got a limited yeah, yeah. a limited way to actually tell you whereas the newer dive computers with like a dot matrix display or even color screen mm. they really spell it out for you yeah the color screens are really good aren't they because obviously everything's color coded and yeah. you just see it there yeah so i know yeah. if something goes red on my yeah. <laughs> screen i need to do something mm. yeah. so um so yeah um yeah so yeah. for new divers yeah i'd go for like Kind of the best that you can afford. Yep. Um, try and invest as much in your dive computer because that's gonna like continue. I mean, like ten years ago, you could get like budget dive computers, but as soon as you got to like advanced and whatnot, they'd kind of hold you back because yeah. they didn't have nitrox or yeah. whatever. But actually, now most dive computers have nitrox. Mm. In fact, I don't know of any apart from like apnea computers that don't have nitrox. Sure. So. Um, so, yeah, any dive computer will be fine up to, like, professional tier. Mm, mm. Um, but, um, but yeah, yeah it's, it's horses for courses. Yeah, kind that's of. it. If, if you're a young, kind of sporty, um, active diver, then, yeah, a wrist-sized computer. But 
everyone else if you're struggling with your eyesight a large screen is fine mm -hmm. um, if you really want to um, sort of if you know when you're starting out that you want to go to tech, you want to go to sort of like advanced diving, yeah. then yeah, spend some time, yeah. save up, because otherwise you're just gonna buy this computer and then cast it buy aside it twice, because yeah. you've got to buy another one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and then just buy sheer water. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Which brings, should you buy the most tech tech dive computer? So, yes. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I mean, Shearwater, for example, um, so they are a technical brand. They're made by technical divers for technical divers. But what they have inside of them is they have different modes. So if you are just starting out and you think you're going to move on to, um, to tech, you can start off with like a Petrol or a Perdix or even a Terek because it's got like a recreational mode, mm. which kind of has... All of the like the the scary, complicated information, it's there, but it's in the background. Yeah. Um, so you can learn to um, sort of use this dive computer in a recreational manner, yeah. and then as you kind of progress, as you grow up, you can then t flip that switch to technical mode, and then it shows you all the information you yeah. need, uh, time to surface, and all that kind of stuff, so that you're like, oh, okay, so yeah, that's what sort of this means, but. Yeah. Because you've been using this computer for years, you know you it. know how to Comfortable use it. With it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I wouldn't jump straight into a, uh, a like technical computer mm. that didn't have a uh, sort of recreational mode because that's just going to be scary and confusing for you. Yeah. Because it's going to be showing you like delta values and, and it's just going to be like oh, I don't know what that means. Yeah. But it's, it keeps flashing. <laughs> um, <laughs> and um, and. Yeah, is you know I I don't know what gradient factor I want to use, so no. Um, yeah. But uh, but if you do believe you're moving on to sort of technical, then yeah, you can. And um, especially with like air integration, if you uh, ever believe that you will want to move into air integrated computers, which has like a wireless air transmitter that fits to your regulator, then you can buy a computer with it. You don't have to use it mm. um, because you do have to pay more to buy this transmitter. Yes. Um, you can just buy that upgrade later if you want to, yeah. but only if it has that um, sort of air integration capability. Yeah. So it's that's kind of a yes. Um, mm. it, it, it depends on the diver. Yeah, it depends on where, where you're going to go with it. Yeah, if, yeah, you, yeah. if you know you're only going to be diving like a couple times a year, if that on holiday, then mm. no, probably not. Possibly not. But if if you're getting serious into it, then yeah, spend some time. Um, spend a little more, bit more time in, uh, sort of investing and saving, mm. and uh, yeah, buy a better dive computer. Yeah. So strongest brands we've pretty much really covered. It's uh, Shearwater. Yeah. Shearwater for me, they're they're definitely top tier. They're yeah. tier one dive mm. computers. Um, Scuba Pro are very much. At the moment, they make really good dive computers, but people don't really know about them. Mm, mm. Um, I think once people do sort of invest and they do get a Scuba Pro the computer, they're like, oh, actually, this is great. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're Mantis. They're, that has, like, you can connect it to a wireless um, heart rate monitor and skin temperature, and that, like, tailors your dive algorithm based on really how cool, warm you are yeah. and, and how hard you're working. Um, Sunto are always the powerhouses. They're yeah. fine. Um, a lot of people find their um, their algorithm a little bit conservative, but I haven't found it that conservative, to mm. be honest. Um, Aqualung, they're another kind of dark horse. They um, uh, they took over Pelagic, which used to make oceanic computers, and they have dual algorithms on the inside, so you can like pick and choose your algorithm to match your buddies. Um, so, yeah. Hmm. I, I wouldn't worry too much about um, dive yeah. computers because they're all they're all pretty cool. Yeah, and if you're waiting for a ten percent off deal for Sunto or Shearwater, keep waiting. <laughs> it will never, yeah. never, never happen. No, no, <coughs> we're we're trying to keep those brands as like premium yeah. as possible. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, anything else on computers? I think that's about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> they're, they're good. Just just invest in a decent one. Yeah, um, and you'll be fine. Yeah. 
Uh, oh, okay, on to a, um, an ad read. Uh, okay, so Scuba Diver Magazine is a monthly publication which is available in most countries and covers the latest news stories so that you can keep up to date with the latest news in and around the scuba diving industry. Scuba Diver also covers all three aspects of modern scuba diving, training, travel, and equipment with how-to guides and reviews on the latest gear and trends. Do you want to do the second bit? Go on. You can also join the discussion over uh, scubadivermag.com with plenty of articles, news, stories, dive site reviews and advice. For, to find out more about Scuba Diver magazine, just click the, uh, the link pinned to the uh, comments below and head over to our website and search Scuba Diver magazine. Yeah, and uh, if you want your free copy, as I said earlier, yeah, just pay us a visit in our uh, sort of Faversham store. Uh, we've got plenty and uh, yeah, you can take one home with you. Yeah. Uh, you don't even have to buy anything, but please buy something. Unless I'm in the shop, in which case you probably you, will. You will be buying something. <laughs> yeah, as like head of sales, Greg, <laughs> Greg just kind of like doesn't let you leave until you buy, buy. something. Buy! Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you bu you're buying a bolt snap and you yeah. know what will go nice with that? A Shearwater Terrick. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Yeah. Oh dear. Right, okay, so let's go for the comments, shall we? Okay. All right, so this first one's from William, and this is from the, the video Wrong Setup and Heart Problem That Killed the Scuba Diver. Mm -hmm. um, I'm looking at getting into scuba diving. The only thing holding me back is some having heart problems. Uh, I love swimming and snorkeling right now. So, what do you reckon? Um, yeah, if you already have heart, I mean, the main thing is. Go find your local dive doctor. Yeah. Um, if you Google like yeah scuba diving doctor, there's a, a whole like website and uh, like group dedicated to them, and you can uh, sort of find your local. I mean, my one was uh, Dr. Ben Solway. He was fantastic. Um, and yeah, they'll they'll basically put you through your paces, and they will give you this like no BS. No, I'm dreadfully sorry, but you can't. Or mm -hmm. yes, you can, but do this. I mean, I knew a diver who. Um, he, he's been diving for years, but then he, oh, I can't remember what happened, but he basically had to get fitted with a pacemaker mm. and then uh, sort of went to the dive doctor and they said, OK, you can still scuba dive, but you can't go below 18 metres. You can't do this. And it's yeah. kind of like you can, but just look after yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, um, so, yeah, and one of the leading causes of uh, sort of fatalities in scuba diving is actual like heart issues so mm. it's it's really more important to keep yourself safe i'd love to say yeah go for it just jump in you'll be fine <laughs> but i i can't promise that yeah, um just and, make sure you're safe yeah i'd rather yeah you make it back yeah. um or just not scuba dive at all and play it safe yeah um but um but mm. yeah i mean i knew a kid he uh, he really wanted to get into it but he had a undiagnosed hole in the heart i was going to say um, i had a guy with the same thing yeah it's uh, it's one of those things that you don't really notice it no, until no. the dive doctor kind of goes, oh, did you know that you have this? And you're yep. like, oh, no. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I'd rather err on the side of caution with those kind of things, especially yes. your heart, because mm. that's quite an important organ. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And th this guy had, uh, the, my, my friend had 11 cha uh, session chambers. Oh. Do you know what I mean? That's a lot. You know, Poor there fella. was there was one chap that came into the dive center years and years ago, and um, he was fit as a fiddle. He used to do like Ironman competitions, all mm. this kind of stuff, uh, like underwater octopus. Um, and um, and yeah, he said um, that there was one point he didn't feel quite right. Mm. Went to the dive doctor, and um, uh, eventually after like ECG tests and all that kind of stuff, they were like, yeah, your your heart just like randomly stops. <laughs> Um, for like two minutes or something ridiculous wow. and he doesn't even notice because he yeah. kind of feels fine mm -mm. just a bit lethargic and they were like well yeah you, your heart only has so many ticks in your lifetime and and you've used a lot of them up and he's like oh wow um, so yeah I think he was fitted with another uh, sort of pacemaker or yeah. something Gosh. but um, but yeah play it safe yeah. uh, talk to a dive doctor and they will they will assess you mm -mm. Uh, do you want to do it? Yeah, go on. So this one's from James Milanese. Um, tips on becoming a rescue diver. Mm -hmm. uh, so why don't divers dive on doubles, but have one tank running to your primary and the other running to the secondary? Mm -hmm. Would that not be better for a situation where if somebody r runs out or uses all their air, then they wouldn't have to uh, worry about them using yours because you have a whole full tank to donate, even if it were a pony? Uh, a lot of sky, uh, scuba divers do. Mm. Um, I mean, the main reason why we have like manifolded twins is um, is that if you're if you have like independent um, cylinders on your back, you're breathing from your primary, and then 
the buoyancy of your two tanks on your back shifts, mm. so then suddenly you're going to be lopsided. Right. Uh, so your buoyancy is going to shift. Um, a lot of um, like instructors, I think it's actually in the uh, instructor manual, you should have a separate independent air source for students should anything go wrong. Mm. So a lot of instructors do. All that usually means is that if something goes wrong, as you donate your regulator, you shut down the uh, the manifold, so you're you're breathing off independent um, cylinders. Does a DMT count? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, but yeah, I, a lot of people do. Um, on um, on singles, it's it's just that little bit more convenient, mm. uh, especially on sort of resort dives. But um, but yeah, the, the answer is. A few divers do. It should be more popular. Um, they should um, sort of try and implement it a bit more. Yeah. But um, diving on twins is there's a lot more to it, um, and it takes a bit more training. Yeah. So um, and also there's there's a certain argument for well, if I'm teaching you guys and you're diving on singles, but I'm diving on twins. There's that like separation. Mm. It's like, well, really, I should be diving on the same equipment as my students, yeah. so that it's it's more relatable because mm, mm. um, they're not going to understand. It's like, oh well, if I'm diving on a single, why why would I dive on this? Is yeah. is this bad? Mm, mm. Um, so yeah, there's lots of different arguments, but I mean, the real thing is is that a lot of people do. Um, they do have a separate. It's just we we manifold it. Yeah. Um, I mean, on side mount, you you breathe down. Different divers do it differently. You breathe down one cylinder, and then when you drop, I don't know, fifty bar or something, yeah. you swap over to the other, mm -hmm. um, so that the buoyancy changes. Because kind of sure. um, yeah. otherwise, you're going to have a really negatively buoyant cylinder mm -hmm. and a really positively buoyant <laughs> cylinder on your back, and it, it good just, luck. Yeah, you're you're just diving sideways. Yeah. So that's that's the <laughs> the main reason. Fair enough. Right, so this one's from EB, and mm -hmm. this was from the video Five Must-Haves for the New Scuba Divers. Uh, what kind of mask do you recommend for a guy with a lot of nose? <laughs> I like the way he's worded that. Yeah, that's, really yeah, nice. that's a really politically correct yeah, 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 yeah. way of saying it. <laughs> um, so, um, the, we, we spoke about it last week. Uh, mm. X-Deep have now got a frameless mask, uh, which is going to be perfect for you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's got a much larger nose pocket compared to a lot of others. Mm. Um, just kind of trying them on, really. Yeah. Um, I mean, when I bought my first dive mask, I went to my local dive center and I must have tried every single mask on that wall before I kind of settled on, yeah, this one. I, I like this mask. Um, it's it's not really worth just kind of going, oh, well, this one's red. Yeah, uh, yeah, <laughs> I want this one. Yeah. Uh, no, just kind of spend some time. Um, but yeah, yeah. if... A good starting place is going to be yeah X Deep Frameless because that's got a huge nose pocket. Yeah. Um, yeah. Really nice mask as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a it's a smart mask. It is right. So DJ Santiago. Whoa. Yeah. Aha. Um, so this is from the video Mara's FlexaFit 5mm gloves. Mm -hmm. um, can a computer like the Terek or D5 with AI take place on a console stroke gauge setup? Not only would it be super streamlined uh, step by getting rid of the gauges and console, it would also offset the price of buying an AI pod. Uh, yes, hmm. is, is the answer. I mean... <laughs> One of the reps, uh, I can't remember who it was, but um, but he sort of took this to the extreme, and he had two hoses coming off of his regulator, one to his primary and one to his like inflator. Mm -hmm. So he had an air integrated, uh, a wireless air transmitter. So that was sending um, all the tank information to your um, to your dive computer, so you know how much air you got left. And um, and his Octo was effectively one of these um, sort of integrated ones into your um, to your inflator. Mm. So it was like a primary donate. And when he turned up at the dive site, the the like dive guide was like, "Where's the rest of your regulator?" And he's like, <laughs> well, "This is all I need." It's like, "Oh well, yeah, I suppose." Um, the main thing is is that yes, you can. It does save a lot of weight and it does save um, a few extra failure points. It's just redundancy. Yeah. Um, I do like to dive with um, sort of wireless air integration because you have quite a lot of benefits. It, uh, it, not over it not only tells you everything on your computer screen, exactly how much air you have left in the tank. Most dive computers actually work out um, like time remaining, gas time remaining, mm. GTR. Um, 
and it's based on how much air is in the tank, how deep you are, and how quickly you're breathing it. It says, right, if you've got this amount of gas at your current breathing rate, you're going to run out in 25 minutes or something. Yeah. So that's really great for sort of working out um, sort of turn times. Um, but the downside is is that if a battery fails mm -hmm. uh, or if you lose connection for whatever reason, yeah. you just don't know. So um, I do like to have that analog redundant backup, yes. even if it is just an SPG, um, a submersible pressure gauge, yeah, yeah, as a just in case. Yeah, it's as long as you know that the battery is uh, is like got decent charge in it, then um, then yeah, definitely you can do it. Um, but personally, I just like a bit of redundant backup. Hmm. Um, yeah. Fair enough. So no, it's it's a very good point, and um, and it is definitely possible. But um, but yeah, I just I just like a bit of backup. Yeah 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 definitely. <laughs> right, so this one's from Thom Nickel, and um, this is uh, from the video uh, Deco Stop podcast on snooper. Mm -hmm. Personal opinion question: Dive right versus X deep. Do you have a preference? X deep, because I do. <laughs> yeah, X deep. Um, I don't know why X deep. I think X deep for me is more of an American brand. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think they've really hit the UK quite yet. Um, not saying there's anything bad about them, but um, I'm a bit more like DIR, mm -hmm. and um, at the moment. A lot of their like harnesses and whatnot, they're very like recreational. They've got lots of clips and just too many D rings. Yeah. Um, I mean, my harness has three. D well, that's a lie. My my D ring has uh, sorry. My harness has five D rings on it, mm. but that includes the crotch strap. Um, whereas you can get like four um, D rings yeah. just on your shoulder straps, and that's just a bit excessive for yeah. me. Yeah. Um, X deep. Yeah, they're they're much more modern, um, where they're they're taking these like popular diving tropes and the kind of the plans and uh, and they're just fine tuning it yeah. and just making it a bit more modern. So personally, for me uh, and for you, it's it's X deep, um, but not saying there's anything bad about dive right. No, no, not if at you all. if you dive a dive right harness and whatnot, that's fine. They have um, oh, I can't remember what they call <clears> it. It's like Super Trex mm. um, uh, or Armour. Oh, I can't remember which one it is, but they have this like super tough outer um, sort of protective layer of nice. their uh, of their wings, mm. uh, which I believe is the uh, the toughest out there. So if you're going somewhere particularly snug, um, then uh, then yeah, they're they're a good they're a good wing because they're very very strong. Yeah. But um, but personally, if I'm going somewhere. Uh, or sort of advising, yeah, I'd go down the X deep route. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Mm -hmm. Right, so this next one, this is from Zach Shannon. Um, this is from the video, The Worst <laughs> Flappy Snag Hazards. Yeah. Um, do you prefer a BCD with or without weight integration, and why? Um, okay, well, for me, um, I, I prefer weight integration, but if, if you're teaching, then no, um, <laughs> you, you, you need your weight belt to teach with Paddy and SSI, um, yeah. and it's, it's part of that. But yeah, for fun diving, definitely, yeah. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're very practical. The downsides for, um, for weight integration for me is that all of your weight is in your BCD. Mm. So your tank, all of your lead, your regulators, everything is kind of there. So trying to get that out of the water is just a real, it's just a, dead weight mm. uh, whereas if you've got a separate weight belt you can kind of spread it around um, sometimes a bit of both is quite handy because if you ever do need to ditch your lead you can ditch some of your lead mm. instead of all of it yeah. um, personally I dive weight belts I don't like having um, sort of too much like integrated weights mm. um, but what I do have is like a P weight on my twin set yeah so, um, so that way the weight is nice and trim against my back, mm -hmm. um, and it's a bit more higher up around my shoulders. Um, but then the rest of the weight I put on a weight belt. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's nothing wrong with um, sort of air integra uh, weight integration. The, yeah, the only downside is yeah, it just makes your entire unit very very heavy. Yeah, yeah. And um, if you ever need to get out of it, because one of um, one of the dive masters I used to know, he uh, he was on a dive. And um, I think there was like a manatee in the water or something. Mm -hmm. And um, so everyone else was kind of like swimming after this. But something was wrong with his, uh, his unit. Something was bugging him. I think it was the cam band was a bit loose. Mm. And he was like, 
well, I'm a dive master. I'll just do equipment removal. So he, he takes his BCD off. But, of course, he's in, like, a three- or a five-mil wetsuit. He starts floating. His BCD starts sinking because that's his <laughs> negative buoyancy. And um, and he's just there by himself. Everyone else is chasing after this manatee. And he's, he's like, doing a handstand. Yeah, oh, my God. Um, eventually, he, like, sorted himself out. But he's like, it, it didn't even, like, cross my mind that me personally, I'd be very positively buoyant. Um, mm -hmm. And, yeah, my BCD would sink. And, and that's your air supply. You, you want to hold on to that. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I prefer a weight belt. So that way I'm myself am as neutrally buoyant as possible. Uh, but I do still have some weight in my uh, in my system. Mm, cool. Right, so this next one, this is uh, from Simon Lewis. Uh, this is from the video, the carbon uh, dioxide in FFS. What do you think of the Blue 3 Nemo system? <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> I had to look this up. I had to look this up. Oh, yeah. This... It's terrifying to be snooper independent, but also so I, I kind of delved into it. And um, I mean, yeah, we, we've already done a, um, mm. a, a deco stop on um, sort of snooper and this kind of hooker style um, thing. And it's, it's terrifying. This is almost one stage worse <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because they so they boast about their um, their smart second stage, which is the bit that you breathe from. And what they've done is they've integrated a magnetic sensor into it so that as you breathe and the diaphragm gets close, a little magnet sends a little switch that goes up to the compressor, which basically tells it to switch on. Mm -hmm. so, so that way they're saying it's good because it saves uh, power because it's not uh, sort of running when you're not demanding gas. Oh, okay. But that terrifies me because... <laughs> All it takes is that little switch to malfunction, yep. and you've just exhaled. You then inhale, and that's when you're going to find out that it's not working. Yes. So no, no. these terrify me. Yes. And there was one. Uh, there was one um, statement, and I should have written it down. It was the most terrifying sentence I think I've ever read, and it was in the. Um, risk management section of their website and it was talking about like what if the uh, the battery starts to run low and um, and it basically said that um, as the battery starts to uh, to run down it um, it basically like lowers the air that it delivers to you oh nice so it just gradually gives you less and less air <laughs> to tell you that the battery is running out so um, a panic indicator oh uh, no these these terrify me yeah. and where most of them they at least have a compressor that's feeding a tank mm. so that's got some like redundant backup this one doesn't yes it, it only sends gas down when you breathe in and the raft is tiny yeah it's really really small yeah it's like action man's life raft <laughs> yeah it's very small no um personally i can't recommend strongly enough to avoid these <laughs> unless you really know what you're doing and you're you've been through like literal drown proof training mm. um no they're they're just there's there's too many failure points there's too many hazards yeah um no they they kind of scare me yeah um yeah dive, the, the independent bit it's just no yeah. <laughs> right. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Simon. Yeah. If, sorry. If you sorry. work for um, for Blue Three, um, but um, oh no, they they just terrify me. Yeah. Okay. So, so this is our last question. Uh, this is from Walid Zahul. Mm -hmm. uh, this is from the video Deco Stop Professional Training. Um, I wear my dive computer, which is the Mara's Puck Pro, on my left wrist, which is on the side of my inflator hose. Uh -huh. Every time I deflate, it beeps because I ascend too fast. Yep. I struggle <laughs> to end a dive without having the fast symbol on it on the log. Is there a solution besides moving my arm really slowly or wearing it on my right arm? Uh, so you... Uh, I don't know if the Puck Pro will do this, but if you change the sample rate on your dive computer, that can help. Um, because if you've got it for like every few seconds, it, um, yeah, your dive computer will freak out because moving your arm up, it, it's literally a meter. So in that amount of time, as far as your dive computer is concerned, your entire body has just gone up a meter. So yeah, it's going to be scared. Yeah. Um, but um, 
Yeah, realistically, move it onto your right arm because you control your buoyancy with your left arm. Your inflator and usually your dump valves are on your left hand side. So you're controlling your positive and negative um, sort of adjustments mm. uh, with your left arm. That's kind of what that does. But um, yeah, the, the, the easy answer is put it on your right arm. <laughs> yeah, that's um, what I'm the, um, the, the other one, if your dive computer can do it, try and find out how to change your sample rate if you can. Um, but otherwise, yeah, just swap arms. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's kind of the best that you yeah. can do, <laughs> really. No worries. So that's about all for today. Um, so we'll just do our outro quickly. Mm -hmm. So very many thanks to Scuba Diver Magazine. Um, the next episode of The Deep Dive will be Dive Insurance. Mm. You can follow us on Radio Public. Follow us on Spotify. Um, you can rate us on iTunes. It does really help the podcast. Five stars, please. <laughs> uh, pop your questions in the comments below. You can do that on YouTube. And share the podcast with all your diving friends and help spread the word. Thank you very much, guys. We'll see you next week. Bye. Yeah. Yeah, if you've got any uh, sort of questions, comments, queries, anything that you want us to uh, to talk about, any corrections, if we've said anything wrong, anything that blatantly offends you, then yeah, um, head over to the YouTube channel and uh, pretty much on any one of the videos, we're always looking at your comments. Uh, sort of pop it in um, sort of any of those comments and uh, and yeah, we'll, we will address them in next week's show. Thank you for watching and uh, safe diving. See you next week, guys. The DK Stock Podcast is produced and recorded by Simply Scuba, the UK's number one dive store. Visit today at simplyscuba.com. I've, I've had quite a few. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, I've had things from being up from a dive, somebody looks at your watch and they're, they're going, oh, that's a nice computer. And they're sort of, you, you're explaining it to them because you think oh, they, they might end up wanting to buy one and yeah. you explain it all to them. And a the girl came up, she went, oh, it's got the aeroplane on the side on yeah, the, yeah. the Sunto. And um, 